Hello and welcome to The Connection Couch. My name is Reg. And I'm Jo. Today we're talking about how you can leverage LinkedIn to grow your business. Thanks for sticking around. We do appreciate it. So Jo, as discussed, we're going to be diving deep in a broad way. (laughs) Um, and how people can leverage the platform LinkedIn to grow their business. So let's just talk some broad brushstrokes to start with. What are some of the basic things that people can do to get started with LinkedIn and how to? Okay, well, the first one is is to actually have a profile. I mean, it sounds obvious, but you can't really leverage LinkedIn without being on LinkedIn. True, yep. So you need to have a a profile. Now, you want to have a profile that's um, optimized the right way so that when you're found in Google, because if, if I if I was to search you up in Google, Reg, mm-hmm. I'm hoping your LinkedIn profile would be in the top three, probably below your website, but up there. And that's what people will do. People Google when people refer to other people or if they're looking for the, the thing that you do. So that's going to show up quite high and explain exactly what you do and sell yourself. So if your profile is not selling yourself right now in a good way, you want to optimize it. And we can, we can spend hours and hours talking about that. So that's profile. Um, then there's your page for your business. So having a page Ooh. as well is another- It's a very underutilized aspect of LinkedIn, isn't it? It is, it is. And mm. I mean, they used to be quite boring, but there's a well, lot more- not boring anymore. No, no, I'm more excited about LinkedIn pages because there's a lot more functionality and there's a lot more way to engage a team if you've got people in your business. Right. So, so those are the two aspects of, I guess, branding. Um, the other is obviously connecting to people on LinkedIn and engaging with those people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just connect and collect. <laughs> connect. connect and collect. <laughs> Click and collect. Yeah. You're not going to get any flyby points for that or whatever points you're collecting. You've got to actually engage. That's where the points are. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was cool, wasn't That's it? That's a good analogy. I like it, it is. Because if you're, not, um, if you're not actually engaging with the people in your network, you're not building relationships. Now, if you want, now the icing on the cake, if you want to be seen as a leader in your field, mm. you need to start sharing your own content or curating other people's content with your thoughts on it. But your own is probably the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, that's the pinnacle, isn't it? Pinnacle, not the tip of the iceberg, because then it means there's, well, yeah, yeah, it is a tip, because then there's other content underneath, but you need a whole content strategy. Mm. But it's just about getting going and using the different forms of content that are going to engage with your audience. So they're, they're probably the, the high level broad brush is that, a, is, that a, is that a word of the day, broad brush yeah. um, approach to LinkedIn? Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Now we can go home. Great. <laughs> My job is done. <laughs> well, no, it's not. I've got to edit it all. Um, okay, so what about your, your let's talk about your, your profile. Your profile, yeah. Um, what are some of the major things that you should consider? Now, we're going to assume that people um, have, have, they do have a profile. And if you and don't, please comment below why you don't have yeah, one. Yeah, why? And why are you watching this if you don't have a profile? That's a bit weird. Anyway, with, with this protection program. Ah, uh, right. Mm, okay. Okay. Good okay. one of those people. Um, so, what are the? Yeah, as I said, we're going to assume that they have a profile and they've got the basics. And what what do people need to do to sort of make their profile stand out a little bit more? Well, how long are we going to talk about this for Reg? We could well, we could talk about this for hours. Are we going to we going to focus on? Yeah, not long. Not okay, long. great. Well, if we talk about the top things you can do, the, the mm. most important things, um, you want to have a Profile, profile photo. That's I was going to say, this. You, you get your face out there you and picture, because please. people need to recognize you. So use one that's up to date, looks like you on a, on a good day in business. And one you yeah. haven't cropped out your ex girlfriend or your ex partner or whatever. No, or, or a topless dress or. Yeah. You know, yeah. Strapless, not topless. Topless. I don't know what the dress that would be. I don't know. A pair of shorts, I don't isn't know. It? <laughs> Top. No, I, do. I don't own any topless dresses, so but no, um, there's a whole fashion why. movement there. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so that's your profile photo. Because um, that's people are judging you in seconds and you want to make sure that you look the part. Yeah. Um, your name, obviously, your name just wants to be your name. No emojis. Well, sometimes, depending on the time of, sh- of uh, publishing, I may or may not have emojis in my name. But if, if you do see that, I'm not being hypocritical. I'm doing some testing. And I'll explain in another video as to why we're doing that. Um, but keep your name clean and just your name if you can. Um, that, now, the other piece of text, or well, the most important piece of text on LinkedIn is your headline. Mm. So your headline is that bit of text under your name. It follows you everywhere. It's a positioning statement. It's an elevator pitch, whatever you want to call it. You have 220 characters to sell yourself. Mm, I was going to say sell your soul. Don't sell your soul. Um, <laughs> it's but, not a lot, is it? 220. 
Well, it's more than it used to be. It used to be 120. So I think our last time we did one of these videos about profile, we, it, well, I would have said 120. So definitely 220 now. And you can say a lot, but it's, it's saying it the right way. So if you're in business, don't say you're a business owner. It's sort of a waste of real estate. Mm. Um, talk about the problem you solve. Cause it's a positioning statement, not a, um, not a job title. You know? yeah, yeah. Unless your job title is exactly what people are searching for, like plumber, electrician. You know, people are, be direct, but if you're a business owner, or a yeah. um, founder. Going, like if I'm, if I'm looking for a, a marketer and all you've got is business owner, then how do I know you're a marketer? You've completely missed your audience. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so say what, what it is you actually do, the problem you solve. Now you want to tell your backstory, so complete all the different sections, your about section, which is your, your kind of story, where you're going, where you've been, why you, all that sort of stuff, toot your own hoard. Um, yeah, we can go into that in a whole other video. Yeah. Um, your experience, tell people, well, give them, give them your career history, but obviously it's got to be relevant to the role. And if you're sharing roles from the past or a completely different industry, look for the transferable skills, the things that are relevant to now, mm. to show the story. Don't leave things off though, because there's gaps in your, in your history and it might not, if you've only got like, if you've been in business for a couple of years and you've decided not to worry about anything else, then it looks like you're brand new completely. Yeah, yeah. look, and I understand why you would think, well, it's not relevant, mm. but it, almost causes suspicion to a degree. Well, where have you, why haven't you put it in? Where, maybe he's in jail, maybe she's in jail, maybe. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be casting any sort of doubts on your past. So hmm. even if you just, you know, employed here, worked here, whatever it is, at least hmm. you're covering the, the time, aren't you? Because it also tells that your journey and your journey, and if someone's looking at you versus a competitor, your journey might be the thing that sets you apart because hmm. of your skill set. Or some, or an industry you've worked in, and you can translate that to something else. So it's, it, you know, unless you've worked somewhere, you're really, you know, like you're a stripper or something, or I don't know. Mind you, that might that might be sell use. Who knows? Um, Customer facing, isn't it? Totally. So it's got to fit, fit your audience. Um, have skills as well. So make sure that you've got some skills. I'm, I'm just moving on from that one, Reg. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. Have, make sure you've got the three skills on your profile are the most important to what you actually are known for. Yeah. Um, important. So once again, if you're a stripper, then stripping is a skill. <laughs> Clearly, it pole is. dancing, all the things that go with it, lap dancing. Um, Let's move on from this. Yes, yeah, that's your example anyway. But obviously, do that with your industry, whatever it is you're into. Um, recommendations are really important to have. As well. Yes, I was going to ask about that. Is it what's it called? Kudos now or something? No, no, no recommendations. It's still called oh, that. Okay. Kudos is a is type of host which they were promoting for. Oh, a while. Is it? okay, my um, It's yeah. a, it's an in the mo in the feed kind of um, kind of way of saying thank you to somebody. But a ask recommend for recommendations is my tip. Yeah, because if you if you sit back and wait, people don't give them because people don't realise that they can. They don't know how to. Hmm. Um, so ask. Well, they're not. That's not how they're thinking. No, they're not thinking about no, you. But if you if you did a good job and you say, oh, would you mind giving me a recommendation? They'd probably go, yeah, no problem. Now, here's a tip. If someone's verbally said something to you or they've emailed you with a bit of a almost testimonial or they've given you a video testimonial, why not repurpose that into a LinkedIn recommendation? Now, you can't add it to your profile through the recommendations feature, but you can ask one, copy and paste that, what they've said already, or type it verbatim kind of what they've said and then just kind of go, I'd love this on my LinkedIn profile. You've saved them a whole heap of effort if you mm. do that anyway, so that's a nice way of getting them. If you've already, you know, kind of got them in other, other ways. Yeah. Uh, put your contact info on your profile. Make it easy for people to contact you as well. It sounds obvious, but... Yeah, that's a strange one. You know, I find that a couple of times. Like, and, and here's one of the things. I mean, I often, if I, don't, if I want to call you, Reg, and you're not in my address book, I mean, you are. You're top of my list. You're on my favourites, my, you know, read... Um, yeah, <laughs> whatever you call that. I was talking with the name of it. You're definitely in my favourites. Okay. Uh, but if you weren't... And, you know, if I didn't, before I knew you, how would I find your phone number? I have to go and look it up on your website, look for emails. But if it's on your LinkedIn profile, I can go to your profile on the app and call you from the app. Oh, that's a good point. And yeah. I use that feature quite a lot. And when someone's phone number's not there, it's frustrating. Hmm. Hmm. Because then I have to go look for it. And I haven't got time for that. No, I know. No, I'm a very busy you woman. You are a very busy I woman. I am. Yeah. So I like, it, I like it to be easy to, to um, I guess, contact people. And same goes for email address too. Make sure that you... You put it in there. It's, it, as you said, it's a no-brainer, but so people forget. Yeah. Oh, and this is the thing. Say, I mean, whether you're in business or you're you're in a job, if always have your most up-to-date email address there. That's professional-looking, so not you know, sexy pants at Hotmail is not the email to put there. 
unless that's your business once again you're a stripper perfect but if you worked at um, I don't know, an organization and you've moved on and started your business make sure that your email address is yours and not the business you worked for because if people start emailing you there you've lost that contact mm. and side and a side tip if you use the the email address you use to log into LinkedIn use an email address that you own not your employer if you've got a job just as a side because if you're logging in with your employer email once again you'll eventually lose access yeah yeah excellent good tips there yeah okay so we've covered the profile then would you think the, i think we have yeah just as a broad brush stroke broad brush stroke yes. yeah um okay and the second part was page we've talked about company positioning page? company page so if we covered that um because I can talk about this for hours, but yeah, we're not going to let's, do that. Let's not, because let's that'll, about, <laughs> I'll nod off. <laughs> but let's just talk about page, though, because well, pages are important. Yeah, how is it different? So in terms of your company page on LinkedIn, firstly, you want to have one. It's free SEO. So it's going to show up in Google for your name. So if people say, speak to your, um, they don't know your name, Reg, but they know your business name. Mm -hmm. They're going to Google Online Videos Perth. Your LinkedIn profile will come up along with your website, hopefully. Mm -hmm. If they're looking for the thing you do, then that can show up as well if you've got the description the right way. Um, so th there's Google. There's also your LinkedIn profile. So you want to have a page and connect it to your profile so your logo shows up in the experience section. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Because you can't add the logo to the experience section. It's pulled through from the page. So that when people see your brand, they know straight away what your business is and also they can click on it and go to your page. So mm. you've kept their attention. Yep. So that's, um, that's essentially the reasons why you'd have a page. Now, depending on the size of your business, the size of your team, it's a hub for your team. So all your team members can connect into the page, shows off the size of your business. Um, if you've got a content strategy happening there, um, that's all, almost pre-approved content for your team to engage and share with. Now, if you're a business of one, like we are, mm. you might be going, well, why would I bother with a page? But I, I still have content on my page, and it's, it's all scheduled, most of it. But it shows that I'm up to date. Um, but it also means I can engage with it personally, which then exposes my page to my personal network. Right. my individual network. But do people interact with pages though? They do. They do. Now if you look at your own home feed, it. well, okay, <laughs> I, I, do you interact with company pages? He's such a stirrer. Um, have a look at your LinkedIn and notice how much company content is in there. Now, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll there's take a lot. Now. Is there? There is a lot. Now if you think about, I'm going to compare it to Facebook now and I know this is not about Facebook and I don't love Facebook, I but Facebook like pages are really difficult to get Firstly, get views on the page and get engagement because they're just not seen. No one sees your content unless they're really active already. But on LinkedIn, if you share content to your company page, and you might not have a, lot, a heap of um, followers, it can still drop into the home feed of those followers. So it's, it's free visibility. So why would you not use it? Mm. Hmm. Okay. So you sort of sold me. Wow. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> um, so profile, company page. Now the others I'm going to go really high brush because we'll go into a deeper video I think. Um, the other reason, um, or the other way to grow your business on LinkedIn is to start connecting to the right people and then, then obviously engaging with them. Okay, define the right people. Well the right, well the, your right people, my right people are going to be different but don't just connect to every man his dog because it's all about getting 500 or 5,000 connections, whatever it is. It's about having people in your network that are either your ideal clients, your um, ideal strategic partners, uh, people that are going to book you or engage you, like if you do speaking, then obviously you want to you you want to connect to conference organisers, for instance. Mm. Um, people that you've worked with in the past, you know, people that people that are influencers of the people you want you want to connect to. So they're what I call the right people. Um, so if you're if you're in the job market, who are the decision makers? If you're running a business, who's the decision maker in the organisation you want to engage? And you might it might be engaging with a couple, oh, sorry, com connecting to a couple of people in an organisation. So that's the right people. And then not, don't collect, don't connect and collect. No. That's not a good, you know, you're not getting any fly-by point, you're not going on a, you know, you're not getting a free flight for that. You want to actually engage with the right people. So work out, you, you've, you've obviously connected to the right, well, calling the right people. Yeah, we're calling them. But then of those people, who are the people you want to build a relationship with? Who do you want to be seen by? Who are you trying to get a coffee with? Impress. Impress. Um, you know, who are you trying to romance to get that, to get that first sale? Mm. So that's the person you want to be engaging with. And people, I think, forget that. 
uh, they focus on throwing content at LinkedIn, which is important, which is the next point I'm going to make. Yeah. Content is important, but more important than your own content is engaging with other people. That's where the conversations happen and conversations are what get us to those sales conversations and coffees or yeah. Zoom meetings or whatever. Is and that's where the growth is as well. Absolutely. Because once you're dealing with one person and, and they're dealing with your content, their network will be seen your Absolutely. content, so therefore you've got more chance of being seen by more influential people. That's right. So if I start engaging with your content, Reg, and you're a, a really influential per person in Perth, which you are, then I'm going to be tapping into your network, you know. Mm. So why would I not engage with you? Because you're well connected. You're like the kingpin of video. Why would I not do that? N nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely engage with Red because he is very well connected. Right, well totally. connected. How are you going, Chris? Um, <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the the last part then, the content. the actual content strategy. Yeah. So content, like I said, we can go into that till the cows come home, oh, we will. I, I, and I will. We will. Not unless now. you stop me. Not now. <laughs> Not no. 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 Um, give yeah. a brief, but yes. Brief. Yeah, I love I love briefs. <laughs> I'm a boxer man myself. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I know, we, we just can't help ourselves. So content's really important to build your own expertise, your thought leadership, your whatever you call that thing. Body of work. Yeah, so content, you can either create your own content or curate other people's content. Now the easiest obviously is curation. So if Reg has po he's created a, po um, a post or a blog about why you should use video on LinkedIn. If I share his blog, but I put my thoughts with it, that's the key part, Put your thought leadership onto someone else's content, particularly someone with authority like Reg, that's going to help my brand. That's the easiest way to get your content out there. See, I'm really like selling you today, aren't I? Uh, you know, it's because it's I'm wearing yellow. Is that what it is? You know, yeah. So bright and cheery. It, totally, Excellent. totally. It's like this whole reflection, um, like a sunflower or something. Anyways, you are. Um, where was I? So that was curation. Creation is was obviously taking time to create your own content, whether it's a blog, a video, or just text. It takes a lot more time to do Don't that. Don't just say, or just text. This text has a part two. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it as a negative. I like text, but a text <laughs> post, a blog on your website, a video post, a podcast, whatever those types of content are, an image, a series of images, a slide deck. I can go crazy with content. I love content. But you want to, you want to do it in moderation. Um, and in kind of, in moderation to, or in, in that's, that, that's, not, that's not the right word. In, um, what am I trying to say, Red? I'm not sure, Joe. You know, like for how many times you post and how many times you engage. It's not one for one. Like if I share a post, I don't right. engage with one piece of content. Post, engage, post, engage. That's too much posting. So the, um, Ratio is ah, the word I'm looking for. Ratio. ratio of content. So my recommendation is one to nine. So for every piece of content you share, engage with at least nine other people's pieces of content. Because then you're reaching their network and you're being seen by their, their connections. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, if you choose the right network, then it'll be easier to, in, well, to engage with their content because it kind of relates to what you're doing. And then your news feed on LinkedIn Becomes, is more likely to be a bit more relevant yes, yes. than just stuff from people that you don't really care about or not interested in. Yeah. 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 I think Pretty that's much. a top tip right there. Yeah. And we've got Excellent. lots of top tips we that we can share. And I'm going to hold them back for another video. <laughs> okay. So we've covered four main areas. Is that correct? Three. Well, three, so well kind of, yeah, kind of four. Pages and profiles. Yeah. Which okay. is positioning. Yeah. Uh, networking and engagement. Yep. That's two as one. And then content, which is curation and creation. So three areas split. Excellent, excellent. There's a, there's a whole like diagram there. Right, so we will be diving into this a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so this will probably end up being a playlist with lots of videos that will relate to this. Um, so if there's a playlist there, please watch some more. There'll be more hints and tips. Um, I reckon we're done. Here we are. We're done. We're definitely done. There's a video on screen right now that I would thoroughly recommend that you watch. Uh, if not that video, maybe the playlist next to it. So stay tuned, we'll have more content next week all about how you can grow your business and leverage LinkedIn. My name is Greg, thanks for watching. And I'm Joe, see you then.